Welcome to Module 5, Sustaining Physical Activity for a Lifetime. Our essential questions are, how can I overcome barriers to sustainable physical activity engagement throughout my life? And how can I use physical activity to improve my wellness throughout my life? Today we'll use evidence-based approaches to help us explore these questions, the social ecological model and self-determination theory. The social ecological model helps us understand that there are a lot of influences in terms of our wellness and physical activity behaviors. It's not just about our own individual actions. It's also about our relationships in our lives, the community we live in, and our society as a whole. Examples of individual influences are things like our age, our likes and our dislikes, our health, and our knowledge. Examples of relationship influences are things like our friends, our family, and our social networks. Our community influences are things like our school, the organizations we're a part of within our community, and even the built environment, such as our parks and recreation, and the amount of safe outdoor open areas that we can be physically active in. Examples of societal influences are things like our own culture and the procedures and policies set within our city, our state, and the world as a whole. And then self-determination theory. Self-determination theory seeks to understand and explain why people do the things we do. Believes that our human nature is to be curious, physically active, and very social. Self-determination theory suggests that our three basic needs can help us answer why we do the things we do. Our three basic needs are competence, relatedness, and autonomy. As we go through these terms, try to reflect on how you can craft these physical activity experiences throughout your life that will allow you to feel competent, related, and autonomous. So competence means we want to feel effective. We want to feel capable and we want to experience growth and outcomes. Relatedness refers to the idea that we want to feel mattered. We want to feel connected and we want to feel like we contribute to the group or the whole. Now let's focus a little more on autonomy. Autonomy is the opposite of feeling controlled. Autonomy is volitional. Volitional behavior means to do things willingly. It means to do things out of interest and enjoyment and do things because we see value in them and we understand the worth of them. So how can we make physical activity a volitional behavior? It's important to think about what autonomy does not mean as well. So autonomy doesn't mean independence. SDT research has found that the healthiest adolescents are autonomously dependent on their parents and can turn to them for advice. Autonomy isn't just taking away constraints or having 100% freedom. Humans still crave a purpose. And autonomy is about the legitimacy of the demands and restraints we are under. Do we think the demands and restraints we are under are important, purposeful, and meaningful to us? So now applying this to physical activity, how can we engage in physical activities that we think are important, purposeful, and meaningful to us? So our challenge for today is draw the modified social ecological model on a piece of paper. Then draw a line down the center of the circle to split it into two halves. Label the left side barriers, the right side strategies. Then ask yourself the following question for each circle and fill in your personal responses along the way. What individual barriers might you might impact you from being physically active now and throughout your lifetime? And then what strategies can I personally do to overcome these barriers? And then we'll ask ourselves that question for each component of the social ecological model. 
Here you can pause this video and take some time to reflect and record your answers. And then throughout today's lesson, you can continue adding to your model as we reflect together. An example of this activity might look like this. So I have my barriers on the left and strategies on the right. Individually, I don't personally enjoy running and I don't like waking up early. So my strategy to overcoming that is I can find other cardio activities I enjoy like biking, walking, rowing, or dancing since I don't like running. And to overcome this barrier of I don't like waking up early, that's okay. We don't have to wake up early. We can schedule our workouts or physical activity during times we enjoy. In relationships, I notice that I'm less motivated to be active when I'm alone. That's a barrier. So to overcome that, I can ask a friend or a family member to be my activity buddy. In the community, I notice that I don't have a gym near my house that I can get to regularly. That's okay. I can go find safe walking routes and parks in my neighborhood um, or be active in my own home. And if a barrier in a society would be like, I want to try swimming, but my cultural beliefs make me not want to wear a swimsuit in public. I could ask the aquatics facility if they allow alternative attire. And I could also look for full coverage options such as like a triathlon suit or a wetsuit that would fit within my cultural beliefs. To help us continue to reflect on the common barriers and strategies that we might encounter in terms of physical activity across our entire lifespan, let's talk about what some other people have found to be common barriers to physical activity. So in this study, females reported their number one reason for not participating in physical activity was not having time to exercise. Males reported that their number one reason to not be physically active was that they wanted to do other things with their time. Some other common barriers were being too tired, not feeling motivated, not having a place to go to exercise, thinking that exercise is too hard, and not enjoying exercise. So how can we take those common barriers and apply strategies to help us overcome the barriers? Here are some evidence-based strategies to increase or sustain our physical activity. We can seek guidance from professionals or peers. We can form a buddy system. We can start a walking group. We can motivate ourselves to be active with technology. Maybe seeing our physical activity on a watch might motivate us to continue to increase our physical activity. And we can also replace sedentary activities with movement options when possible and safe. Walking and biking when we're able, taking the stairs, and seeing how else we can just sneak extra steps into our day-to-day -day activities. Lastly, let's talk about the physical activity recommendations across the lifespan. It's important to keep in mind that throughout our lives, there are different recommendations for each age group based on the health benefits and the safety. Remembering that we should focus on physical activity that is meaningful to us will help us sustain this physical activity throughout our life. The key guidelines for preschool age children they should be physically active throughout the day and adults and caregivers should encourage active play of a variety of physical activity types. A review from a few weeks ago, we know that children and adolescents uh, should do at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a day. Remembering that muscle strengthening and bone strengthening activities should also be incorporated at least three days a week. Another review from a few weeks ago is the key guidelines for adults. Overall, we want adults to move more and sit less. Ideally, adults should do at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week, and they should focus on doing muscle strengthening activities that involve all major muscle groups on at least two days per week. A new category is older adults. So, Key guidelines for older adults include, older adults should do multi-component physical activity 
that includes balance training as well as aerobic and muscle strengthening activities. Older adults should choose their activity levels based on their own level of fitness to make sure that their physical activity is safe. Older adults with chronic conditions should understand whether and how their conditions affect their ability to be physically active. And if older adults cannot do 150 minutes of activity a week, they should be as physically active as their abilities and conditions allow. Another new category is physical activity for women during pregnancy and the postpartum period. Women should do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity a week during pregnancy and the postpartum period. Preferably, this activity should be spread out throughout the week. Women who were habitually engaged in vigorous intensity aerobic activity or who were physically active before pregnancy can continue these active activities during pregnancy and the postpartum period. Women who are pregnant should be under the care of a healthcare provider who can monitor the progress of the pregnancy. Women who are pregnant can consult their healthcare provider about whether or how to adjust their physical activity during pregnancy and after the baby is born. Another new category is key guidelines for adults with chronic health conditions and adults with disabilities. Adults with chronic conditions or disabilities who are able should do at least 150 minutes to 300 minutes a week of moderate intensity or 75 minutes to 150 minutes a week of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity or a combination of both. Preferably aerobic activity should be spread throughout the week. Adults with chronic conditions or disabilities who are able should also do muscle strengthening activities of moderate or greater intensity that involve all major muscle groups on two or more days of the week. When adults with chronic conditions or disabilities are not able to meet the uh, guidelines above, they should engage in regular physical activity according to their abilities and should avoid inactivity. So how can I use physical activity to improve my wellness throughout my life? Let's review today's lesson. We started by talking about the social ecological model. The social ecological model helps us understand the factors that can support our physical activity and the factors that could be barriers to our physical activity. Then we looked at the self-determination theory. Self-determination theory really highlighted for us how important it is to engage in physical activities that we find value in, that we feel successful, that we feel are meaningful, and that we enjoy. So a way that we can continue to add meaning to our physical activity is by having goals for ourselves of ways that we can improve our wellness. So we could improve our physical wellness, things like cardiorespiratory endurance or reducing our risk of disease. We can use physical activity to improve our psychological wellness. Physical activity can be a great stress reliever for some and physical activity can improve our cognition. We can also use physical activity to improve our social wellness. As we learned in our social wellness lesson, Physical activity can foster meaningful relationships with others, and we can continue to foster these meaningful relationships with others throughout our entire life. Continuing to be physically active and social with friends and family throughout every stage of life, while keeping in mind the physical activity recommendations and safety considerations associated with each new chapter in our life. We hope that during this module, you can get to a point where you know how to interpret the differences in physical activity recommendations across the lifespan, where you can describe personal and common barriers to sustained physical activity engagement, where you can describe strategies that support sustained physical activity engagement throughout the lifespan, and that you know how to create two SMART goals that will help you overcome barriers Um, to sustainable physical activity engagement. We also hope that you'll be able to perform interruptions in sedentary behavior every 30 minutes throughout most of the day, each day of the week. We hope that you'll be able to perform strategies that will support your physical activity. 
and we hope that you can meet the weekly physical activity recommendations for your age group. We hope that you can reflect on your personal barriers to physical activity engagement and that you can reflect on the strategies that, we, that you can use to overcome those barriers that will allow you to engage in sustained physical activity engagement throughout your entire life. Thank you very much for watching and be well.